And now zoom back in all the way and uh, concentrate on the red dots. You'll notice that the red dots are situated. Some of them are in between the lines. It's giving you a good idea of how you can actually measure and figure out exactly what the, uh, the height is between the lines. Right? The red line is 310, obviously. And if you move down a little bit, you got 309. 308 on the next intervening line, 307, 306, and so on and so on. So when you're actually measuring the height of where you are, where you want to be, you've got to actually uh, keep an eye on what your zoom is so you can know what the contour ele elevation is at certain zoom levels, right? Does anyone not catch that? All right, I'm going to assume your silence means you're all getting that. Yeah, got it. Yep. Got it. Got it. All right, so... Uh, so remember, as you zoom out, the contour uh, interval is going to change. So the further out you are, the further between each line, each, you know, the distance is between each contour elevation. So when you're uh, calling in Arty, and you're saying you're that you're calling in elevation at 326 feet, you've got to make sure it's actually at 326 feet. So you know, also look around; you'll see uh, reference points like, i.e., Hill 311. But if you look down on the road, you'll notice that the reference point, it's 202, so it's almost 100 meters difference, vertical difference. All right? So you always want to keep an eye and uh, understand how elevation will play in uh, your navigation. All right, so another thing I need to teach you is the easting and northing system. All right? Basically, if you zoom out all the way, you'll notice uh, numbers going across the bottom, top, left, and right of your screens. All right? These are your eastings and northings. All right? Northings are going to start at zero and work their way up your screen. All right? Starting from zero, zero, you got zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, et cetera, et cetera. Moving all the way to the top of the map, which is almost at zero, er, is almost at uh, 15. All right? These are referred to as northings. If you're ever told, don't go past northing 064, that means you look on the left and right side of your screen, you'll see uh, number 064. That means they don't want you to go either north or, if you're heading south, south of that uh, grid square line. Who doesn't understand that? Got it. All right. And now your eastings, okay, the reason why it's called a northing is as you move north, the numbers increase. And same with the eastings. As you move east, the number increases. So you'll notice going from west to east, you've got numbers across the top and bottom of your screens that are increasing in increment. So, like if I said, don't move east of 055, that grid line that moves up north and, north and south, you're not to go east of that. Or if I was heading west, you wouldn't go west of that. You all understand that? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Way to go. Remember, if if I ask and you don't understand, uh, just speak up. So uh, I'll get I'll get that for you. All right. Northern and Easterns are part of the uh, military grid reference system. Basically, what the uh, the military most of the militaries around the world uh, did is they took the globe, decided on uh, how they were going to do it. They actually took the globe and uh, sectioned it off into a giant giant grids. All right. I mean, there are grids that cover hemispheres, and then those grids were further subdivided, further subdivided, and so forth. So, you know, each grid has its own actual number allocation. So you can actually go into different parts of the world and ask for map number so-and-so, 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 and they'll be able to pull you out, boom, the map of wherever you needed. So uh, basically it's a uniform system that the military used to uh, map the entire world. So each, each point in the world will have its own latitude, longitude, and uh, map corresponding uh, grids so that you can find where you are exactly. All right, basic way to read a grid in real life and in ARMA is you're going to take your eastings first, which will be the top and bottom numbers, all right? So say I was gonna look, I was gonna get home, all right? That would be 059, 051. All right, you're going to take that top number first and then the side number. All right, any questions? 
All right. Now, to get an eight-digit grid, because the map automatically gives us our uh, six-digit grid, we need to further subdivide that grid, grid square that home is in, into ten more pieces. So, moving from right to left across the top, imagine a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right? With zero being the closest to the right and nine being the closest to the left. All right? So home would be approximately 0, 5, 9, 3 or 4, give or take. I'd say more to 3. All right, who doesn't get that? Yeah, I got it. All right. Now for your easting, you'll do the same thing, with 0 being as close to the southern portion of that square, going up to 9 being the closest to the top. Again, it looks like it'd be about 3. All right. So you could say zero five nine two or three, depending on how you see it, zero five one three, and that'd give you a pretty accurate idea of where our home spot is. Wait, so west to east, it reads yeah. it goes from uh, west, it goes from zero, and east it goes to nine, right? Yep. You'll start. Okay. At, you'll start. Yeah, zero Roger, I got west. it. Yep. Now, if you want a good a uh, good description of how that'll look. If you look to the northeast, you'll see a black uh, uh, grid that has a, uh, a grid further subdivided. That'll pretty much give you a good illustrated idea of what, how to uh, get an eight-digit grid. You all see what, I see what I'm showing you there? Okay. Yeah, I see. Now, if you wanted to get a ten-digit grid, we'll go with what I just showed you, which was... Uh, all right, so this is in the uh, grid uh, 061058. So let's say I got grid 061405840584, which will put you kind of near the center of that grid. All right. Now, if you take that box and even further subdivide it into 10, 10 grids, that will give you an idea of how to get your 10 digit grid. So say I say 061. Four, five, zero, five, eight, four, five. That will basically put you right in the middle of that grid square. See what I'm talking about? I can't imagine we use that much in armor. We do, actually. If you're uh, yep. if you're going artillery, there's a lot of times in which you'd use a ten-digit grid square, especially if you're using if you're using a uh, GPS uh, sat arm round. No kidding. Yep. Now, a lot of, as a standard infantry person, you're probably not going to use this. But if you're, say, a forward observer, JTAC, or artillery, yeah, you're, you're definitely going to want to know how to get a 10-digit grid. So this gives you kind of a uh, visual representation on how you would do that. All right? Does everyone understand how to get a 10-digit grid and an 8-digit grid? Yep. Yep. Go for that. Excellent, excellent. All right. So, uh, shit, went out on my mat. On that. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over types of terrain, and we're going to stay in the map to do that to show you the kind of terrain you're going to uh, you're going to encounter. Now, uh, one thing you uh -huh. can get uh, the six uh, eight digit grid with the map tool. But it doesn't work at the moment because the size of the map tool isn't right at the moment. Yeah, it's it's kind of out of scale. So, yeah, if you if you look at the Romer and uh, the little right hand uh, things I showed you that were in the uh, that were near the uh, ruler, those would be a way to get an eight and ten digit grid square. But since it's not really to scale, uh, you can't use it. Is it too small or big? I think it's just a little too big. It's twice twice the size. Yeah. And they refuse to change it. Because in real life, I'd, in real life, I'd imagine it'd be quite big too, right? I mean, it, but it, of course, it'd be to scale with whatever the map was. Yeah, exactly. Well, almost all maps are uh, set to the same scale. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you, the, I think the smallest map is uh 100 by 100 kilometers and yeah it, it they'd all be to scale and you'd be able to set everything up 
All right, so now I'm going to go over terrain features and how to interpret them in the map. So if you scroll your map down to the uh, two uh, boxes, you'll see to our south. We can uh, kick that area off. Let me know when you're all uh, when you all see it. Mm -hmm. Got it. That one well here. Yep. Roger. Excellent. All right. First thing we're going to go over is your types of slope. All right. You got your standard slope, which would just be your uh, standard uh, hill. If you look above that valley and you just see that kind of sloping area, which leads to the top of the hill, that's a standard slope. All right. Nice, easy hill that you know, easy enough. Next, you've got your uh, concave and convex slopes, right? If you look at that valley, that's your uh, best uh, best interpretation right there of a convex slope. It's one that curves around you if you were moving up it, and uh, you basically see hills on either side of you, okay? Now, oops, pardon me, mouse stopped working. Okay, now, if you look uh, over to the saddle, all right. The eastern part of that saddle that's uh, moving to the south of Nadezdino, all right, that is a good concave slope. It curves outward, and if you were on it, you'd be able to look down the sides of it, kind of like, pretty much like a ridge, right? The best way to think of a uh, convex and uh, concave uh, slope is convex will be like a valley that's moving up, and a uh, concave is kind of like the outside ridge line of a uh, slope. All right? Who doesn't got that? Got it. Okay. Now, another thing about a valley is it may not be moving up like this one and increasing in uh, elevation. A valley is basically any depression that's uh, got a sloping upward away from it. So, let me see if I can find one on the map that's got a more of a neutral slope. Ah, oh, I think my, map, my mouse's batteries are dying, so I'm having trouble moving my map around. Basically, if you look down any uh, MSR that's uh, between two hills, and the hills run alongside of it, that gives you a good idea of what a valley is. Like a larger valley is if you look above uh, Nadezdino. What's that? I said three valleys, or perfect valleys. Yeah, that so would be a perfect. Yeah, if you if you look uh, if you look north of Nadezdino where that uh, ASR is moving, you notice that they uh, slope away, slope upward away from the MSR. That would be a large valley. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Mm hmm. Just trying to find Nadezdino or whatever it is. Nadezhnyo, it's just south of the home. Yeah, it's just south of home. So just north of home is the ASR. All right, yeah, got it. Yeah, you'll notice that on the east and west of the ASR, they slope upwards in the hills. That's a large valley. So, all right. Now, if you look uh, into the uh, eastern box, this gives you a good idea of what a saddle looks like. All right. A saddle, basically, if you think of a horse saddle, you'll notice that the uh, terrain feature looks almost exactly like that where you would be sitting on a horse right everyone got that mm -hmm. copy excellent good to go all right now another terrain feature is what we call a finger all right it's kind of like a ridge that extends away from a hill if you look let me find a good prominent one unfortunately zedek didn't uh didn't highlight any of these, so it's just something I know from my experience. Basically, all right. Look at the valley box again. You see the uh, that concave slope that's just inside the box uh, to the northeast of the valley. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a finger, right? It's basically a jut of land. Like if you look at your hand, right, and imagine valleys where your the space between your fingers are. A finger would be a jut of land that juts out kind of like a ridge line. You see what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. See it, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Wait, this this is one of the you, best... Uh, what was that? Got a mean? question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you see my map markers? No, you just don't um, see my map markers. No, I do not see your map markers. 
Yo, wait. Real quick, I'm gonna go. Yeah, basically, yes, that's what I'm trying to show you. Okay, the best way to to remember how a terrain feature looks is take your take your hand, lay it out flat on your desk, and then basically let your knuckles bring your knuckles up so that the tips of your fingers are still on the uh, desk while your palm is up in the air. Right now, that gives you a good idea of terrain features because between your knuckles is your saddle okay between your fingers is what a valley would kind of be like your uh your fingers are fingers and if you go along the knuckles that would be a ridge line right are y'all seeing this brilliant yeah yeah great yeah that those are your basic five uh five terrain features you'll see other than like hills and whatnot where your entire hand like that is a hill so that's a good way to remember your terrain features okay and there, there's little more I can show you the only uh, other thing I could show you is how to associate them on the map so like the saddle is the one on the eastern box your valley is the one in the western box a ridge line would be a long one like say if you look north of that uh, eastern box where you see the uh, castle sub, a ridge line could be that. A ridge line could be that uh, saddle you see there, or the saddle that's in that box, or a grouping of saddles going for an indeterminate amount of length. It could also be just a, uh, you know, a hill out in the middle of nowhere, which you know is very prominent, you know, or a. Uh, or along a mountain line, right? A ridge is basically anywhere that if you stood on top of it, you could skyline yourself to all sorts of other people, right? Basically a prominent point on the map, right? A hill is like uh, where you see on Windy Mountain, just to the uh, west of the valley box. That's a good hill right there, all right? So all you really need to do to really get used to these is just look around the map and it'll give you an idea of how things look. Now one thing I do need to point out is a hill and a depression can look very similar. So you need to be very careful on your, uh, your map markers and your reference points to where uh, things are going. So you can get an idea of which way the slope is heading. Okay? That, is a, that is something that will trip you up really quickly. All right, so do we have any questions on uh, terrain features and a topographical map? Nope. Nope. Excellent. Okay. Moving on, I'm going to go to your standard uh, map markers on what can what will show up on a map and how to uh, interpret it. Okay. Now, one thing you'll need to look at is if if you look at where we where we have our home spot. All right. Now look to the east of that. You'll see a little tree in the middle of the forest. Looks like a Christmas tree. Copy mm -hmm. that. All right, that there is the uh, symbol for a coniferous coniferous forest. All right, who can tell me what a coniferous forest is? Pine one trees that, and shit. Yeah, one that doesn't shed its leaves. Exactly. Yes, pine trees, etc. You know, forests like that. So if you're lost in a forest and you know what kind of trees are around you. That might help you if you pull out your map to figure out exactly which forest you're in. All right. If you look, the other trees right. are leafy. Yes, the other trees are leafy. So if you look, I'm trying to find the uh, just spot on straight the west, just to the left, I think. To the west. Grid uh, zero five zero zero six one. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, exactly. Zero five zero zero six one. Perfect. Good arrow. That there is the uh, the symbol for a deciduous forest. Leafy trees that will lose their uh, leaves during the winter. Unfortunately, in Arma, I don't believe that's uh, that's modeled. So, but if you uh, see those is. kind, oh, it is excellent. Yeah, so, on this map at least. Well, on this map. So therefore, you'll know if you see you know bare trees at winter time. You're running through a deciduous forest. You might be able to pull that out and say, "Okay, I knew it was in this general area. The only deciduous forest is here. I must be in this uh, general area." 
you know, and vice versa. It'll, it'll let you know your general area a lot better. All right. Any questions on uh, force? Negative. All right. Excellent. Just, okay. Just a yep. note. The um, the trees that lose their leaves. Shenrush is set during the autumn, so all the trees that lose their leaves, they are currently gold. So you can really tell, obviously, in Shenrush. Uh, yes, you might see it. If you look around, exit your map and look around, you should see, uh, yep, you should see trees that are losing their leaves and turning brown and stuff. Those are your deciduous trees, while the ones who are staying green are your standard coniferous. And a good way to remember a coniferous uh, tree is it makes cones so if you do a little research on your trees you'll be able to find a few and probably identify them in the game all right back into the map all right now that we're done with trees we're going to go over roads so uh, what i want you to do is uh scroll down to chernogorsk which should be to our uh, southeast got it all right there there are basically three main types of roads in armor in, in real life, there's a whole bunch more, but we're not going to go over those. Okay, in Arma, you got your MSRs, which are your uh, dark orange roads, which you can see a whole bunch of in Chernogorsk. You've got your ASRs, okay? Uh, just so you know, MSR is main supply route. ASR is alternate supply route, which if you move to the uh, northwest, you can see a bunch of tan roads, which are your ASRs. And then you've got your kind of transparent roads, which are dirt roads and uh, just your uh, off-roading type roads. All right, you'll notice I put some uh, markers uh, just north of Chernogorsk, where you got yeah, your MSR your ASR and your alternate routes. Alternate routes are generally uh, unpaved, uh, might just be a one man track through the woods or a game trail or something like that. ASRs are generally uh, low capacity roads, uh, so that's why they're not MSRs. Generally uh, undeveloped roads might be able to get some light tonnage through, whereas MSRs are good enough to move through large vehicles and uh, probably heavy armor as well. All right, everyone got that? Yep. All right, one thing I want to show you, uh, if you know, you, if you take a look at the contour lines, they're a bright red, right? If you look in Chernogorsk, you, you can see kind of a dull orange line that looks a lot like a contour line. That dull orange line is a railroad, right? Choo -choo. Indeed. So if you're looking through, and some, some people have been known to uh, confuse the orange railroad line with a contour line, so you want to be pretty careful when you're actually looking at that. Yeah, thanks for uh, marking that. So you can, if you take a look at that railroad, and then just to the northwest of that, there's a contour line. It'll give you a good, uh, good comparison of the color difference. Very similar and easy to mix up. All right, next we're going to move on to buildings and whatnot. So stay on uh, Chernogors. All right, you'll notice most of the buildings are marked. All right, and some of them have unique markings. So, uh, who can tell me what they see there? I see industrial district, gas station, and gas station, bus church, stop. factory. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, generally, the smokestacks. Marina. Yeah. yeah. Docks. Yep, yep, marinas and whatnot. All right. So, just so you can get an idea for this map, the legends, uh, the smokestacks are generally uh, factories. Uh, churches, they generally have two different, uh, two different uh, symbols. Either that cross you see at uh, 066-023, or sometimes you might see the, uh, the crucifix type cross, the one that's offset to the top. Okay. That, uh, that, that cross right there is a temple. The other one is a Christian cross, and I yeah. believe the, the third is uh, Islamified. Yeah, the... Uh, the crescent moon generally um yeah that there's a temple non-denominational and uh and like they said you got the christian cross for uh christian and i believe uh mosques and whatnot have the I'm not sure if they changed it but last i knew it was the uh crescent moon All right yeah if you look to the uh the east you'll see uh anchors which denote docks and marinas 
and of course the little bus symbol you 